No racing at Imola this weekend, more is the pity. I'll be doing another live stream over the weekend at some point, I'll let you know. Uh, in the meantime, Mercedes AMG Petronas have put out an interesting series of clips, I've put out a YouTube video indeed, uh, a well-edited one, about the background to creating an upgrade to the car and getting it to the track. Now most of it is fairly straightforward stuff that I think most people know. Uh, nice to see pictures behind the scenes of course, but for me, and I think probably for most of the Formula One fans out there, the most interesting thing would have been will be whether or not there's any hint as to what the real upgrade was going to be on the Mercedes. Have we seen it in Imola this weekend? It's obviously an aero upgrade. Uh, everything else is kind of second to aero these days. Uh, and it's a big question, of course, in, in, in the lives of everybody at Mercedes as to where they're going with this car. Can they close the gap to Red Bull? Well, this, uh, the clips that Mercedes put out do not answer any of those questions. No surprise there. But I thought it was quite interesting to see two of the people involved on the arrow side who do talk at a little bit uh, at length about what they do. No information actually given away in terms of where they're going with the car and what the performance improvements will be. But uh, I thought it'd be interesting just to take those two people, Claire Simpson, who is the aerodynamics group leader, and Emma Corfield, who's the aerodynamics performance engineer at Mercedes. I'd never heard of their names before, got to see them before. So the main purpose of this video is not to say, this is where Mercedes are going, and this is what they've done wrong, and are they going to get it right in the future? It's just to meet two of the people that we don't normally hear about in the aero department, this critical department at Mercedes, which let's face it, over the last 18 months, two years, has got it completely wrong. Uh, I'm not saying they won't get it right. And this is no, of course, no uh, suggestion that any of the people here are not absolutely very good at what they do. But given the vortex in which Mercedes find themselves at the moment in this aerodynamic quandary of where they're going with the car and how good the Red Bull RB19 is, I thought it would be interesting just to put together, which I've done, the two chats with these two uh, engineers to get a feel for the people behind the scenes at Mercedes in the aero department. So here you go. The process that we would follow in terms of putting together an aerodynamic upgrade is, first of all, identify what we want to improve in terms of the airflow around the car. The second part of it is then to come up with different ways of trying to target that with the geometry and within the regulations that we have. And then we would do a mixture of testing. So we'd run simulations to try and understand if we can manipulate the flow field in the way that we want to. And then if something was to be successful from that test, we would then take it into a wind tunnel test and try and understand if it's improved the aerodynamic performance or not. Once we get an update to the track, within the aero department, we're probably already well into working on the next upgrade package to continue driving the performance of the car. There's a bit of a feedback process because we can look at how what we've already released has behaved and then decide if that will steer what we might do next as a result. The areas we change might be specific to the event. So for example, low down for circuit, we'd be looking more to bring, um, say, a rear wing package or for other events, it would be uh, more of a general aerodynamic upgrade. So once an update makes it to the track, the way that we analyse it will vary depending on if it's an update package or if it's just a single component. For those smaller components, um, they're a bit easier to fit at the circuit. We have hundreds of sensors all over the car that allow us to measure the aero data. This is streamed real time. We're able to do initial analysis on the updates when the car is still out on track. For the larger aero upgrades, it's a bit more difficult to fit that into a single race weekend. And so we have to make sure at the previous races we're collecting enough data so that we've got something to compare back to. When it comes to analysing the aero update and checking that it's had the desired effect on the performance, there are kind of three main areas that we look at. So firstly, we compare back to the previous component um, and check that we are actually getting the performance improvement from the aero sensors on the car. Secondly, we're looking for any characteristic changes. So certain components may improve the performance in particular corners or particular phases of the corners around the circuit. And then finally, we compare these results back to the expected results from the wind tunnel as well. This wind tunnel data also feeds into our simulation tools and that allows us to see which corners around the circuit we think that the performance improvement will be the largest. Love, love. 